Hi, my name is Sharon Clampett, and I am a professor at Inter-American University of Puerto Rico. I have been teaching online for over 20 years, and right now my university, like many of your schools and uh, colleges, are on lockdown, and are, many of you are being forced into e-learning with very little time to get prepared or learn how to do this. So I'm taking advantage of this downtime that I have to create a few videos to help you out, especially with this tool, which is Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. In this video, uh, I'm, I want to show you how to do some of the activities you might do in your traditional classrooms, like having students work together in groups, break up the classroom, they work in little groups, and then come back and discuss it. And you can do that here and collaborate with what are called breakout rooms. I'm also going to show you how to use a little uh, polling tool, which kind of makes uh, the interaction a little more engaging and, and kind of fun. So I'll do that. And then finally, I'll talk to you a little bit about how you can create rooms for your students to go in and work together in groups on their own. Very simple to do. So let's get started. I'm already in my room. And what is going on? Okay, let me go down here. And I have three students. I have Alba, Claire, and Gunter. And I, what I did is I went into another browser and I just used the guest link and logged into uh, this room for demonstration purposes. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is how to do, use these breakout groups. So I want that Alba, Claire, and Gunter to go into a little group by themselves, work on something, and then they can come back and, and share it with the rest of the group, which in this case, it doesn't exist, but just to give you an idea. So we need to go to that lower right-hand corner uh, to look at the share content uh, option. And you'll see here that under interact, it has breakout groups. Now I have, uh, up here it has random assignment. When you do random assignment in this, it's, you automatically have two groups and it will just distribute all the students equally as much as possible between the two groups. And you can see that I have Claire and, and Gunter, Claire as Claire's day and Gunter lunch uh, in group one and I'll be seeing you in group two with me. Now, I don't really want to do that because I want those three students to work together. So what I'm going to do is going to change it to custom assignment. Now, custom assignment allows you to drag and drop the students into the groups that you want them to go in. And I'm going to put Alba, Claire, and Gunter all into group one. You can add more groups. Come on, Gunter, get into group one. There we go. Once you have them, and you see these little plus signs, that's where you can add more groups if you want to. And you can change the names of the group, I think. Uh, but anyways, once you get them in the group, uh, you press start. This takes a little while, so you need to make sure your students know what's going to happen, that you're going to put them in the groups and then uh, a little process will happen, so it, ta it takes a little while. I am still in the main room. So now apparently my, my students have gotten disconnected and they are now moving into group one. Let's see, group one here, I have three students and I'm in the main room. And you'll also see here that it says I'm the only one in the main room. If I wanted to go in and visit with those students, I can just move myself into one of the groups. And you do that by using the attendee controls that are next to uh, the, the name of each of the participants. So here we see that I have moved to another group. If I wanted to go in and join the students that are in group one, I would just click on that, and then I would drag myself into that group with the three students that I have. Okay. 
I would have to press update for me to move to that group. Okay. And now you can see I'm moving to group one. Takes a little while. Like I say, you have to let the students know that this there's might be some time when nothing's happening. Okay, so now I am together with them in uh, group one. Okay. Once the session is done, you're ready for them to all come back and meet in the main room. You just end the breakout group session. End breakout groups by pressing that little circle with the square in it. And now everyone is returning to the main room. Now there's something that you do need to know while we're waiting for everybody to come back to the main room. Uh, we found that when you're recording this session for them to, to use at a later date, but we found that whatever happens in the break rooms stays in the break rooms. There's no, uh, you do not record what goes on in the break rooms. So breakout rooms. So just keep that in mind. They won't be able to see anything they've discussed in those rooms. So that is how you use the breakout rooms. And it's not that hard. It just takes a little time to make sure that you give the students the instructions uh, about what's going to happen and what they should be doing in those rooms. Now I'm going to show you another little tool here, which is the polling tool. Now the polling tool, it just kind of makes uh, a regular conference a little more interesting. It's kind of like when you stop uh, in the middle of a session and, and ask the students uh, a question to kind of confirm that they have understood the material. So I'm going to show you a little bit of polling here. It has two options, multiple choice and yes and no questions. Now, for me, the yes and no questions just don't, it doesn't make much sense because you do have the agree, disagree buttons down in the, in the main room. So I don't I don't really understand why you want to do a yes or no, but uh, it exists as well. So you can see I have a multiple choice question and I'm going to, how much do you know about collaborate? And I'm going to add a choice here. So I want three choices. So I have, I love it and I use it all the time. Um, second option is I um, I know what it is is but don't use it much. And then the third answer is what is collaborate? So now I'm going to start the polling. I've got these three questions. And you will see that the little poll comes up here. Now I'm going to go out just for a second and I'm going to go, I'm going to switch, you, may, you won't see this, but I'm going to go switch to the different users and I'm going to have each one of them answer the poll. So the next one. And I'm going to have two people say that I don't know much about it. And now I go back to my room and you can see that the responses are being uh, recorded. And there's a little graph down here at the bottom. So if I want to view the poll, show responses. Let's see. Okay. So you can see two people knew a little bit about of it and one knew a little bit, a little bit, okay? So that's kind of fun. Uh, the only thing you do have to know is you cannot do this ahead of time and you can't do more than one poll at a time. So you, unless you're a fag, uh, kind of a fast typer, it can take a, it can be kind of uh, disturbing uh, in the classroom. It might uh, interfere with the flow of the class if you stop and, and do that. So, but it is fun if you're a little, if you're somewhat of a fast typer. Okay, good. So 
that is how to use the breakout rooms and how to use a little polling tool just for, to kind of mix things up a little bit. Now, what I want to show you, what I want to talk to you about is creating rooms for your um, students to work on their own. Now, if you, you saw in the first video that I did on the basics of introduction to, to using Collaborate, how to create a session. So if you haven't seen that, you might want to go back and review that. And one of the options was to, uh, one, leave the, the room open, so no ending time, so that it's open all the time till the end of the semester, till you, you know, stop it. And another option was for you to assign their roles. Now, if you sign them uh, as, a, as a participant or a presenter, they can't record the sessions. So what I do is I make sure that everyone who enters into the room, it's an option in the setup menu, is allowed to, is given the, the role of moderator. They can go into that room anytime they want. They meet together. One of the one of the students will initiate the recording and you assign them what to talk about. Uh, you tell them you need to go in and discuss this assignment together, do this assignment together. They can share files, they can share PowerPoints, they can share their screens. Anything that you can do, they can do with a moderator privilege, except they can't erase the session. Then you go back, once they've told you that they're done, you go back at another later time and review the recordings and see what happened uh, while they were discussing the different topics. Now, I have used this as um, for role playing uh, in some of the sociolinguistic courses that I do that I ask them to, to role play certain uh, pragmatic aspects. I won't go into details. Um, I've asked them to do group work together with these uh, by themselves. And if they miss a video conference, our, all of our online courses require uh, video conferences, the attendance to these video conferences. And if for some reason they miss a conference, especially if they're like in a different time zone, this, uh, I have a student in Germany and I've had student, several students from California, which is like four or five hours difference in time. And uh, so they were not able to make it when I planned the, the video conferences, trying to meet majority of the students' needs. So what I do is I set up a makeup room and they go in, they, they're required to contact another student, at least one other student to go in and um, meet and discuss the topics that we discussed in the planned video conference and they do it and they don't have any difficulty as long as you give your students enough information enough instruction they're able to uh, do these activities on their own and you don't have to be with them every second well i hope this video conference helps you uh, do some of the kind of activities that you would like to do in your classroom with your students and you have a good time if you have any questions feel free to contact me uh, either in the comments to these videos or on Facebook. I have a page, Clampett's Continuum, or you can write me to my, e I'm in Twitter, I'm an S.A. Clampett, and if you want to write me an email, S-C-L-A-M-P-I-T, S. Clampett, at Ponce, P-O-N-C-E, dot inter, I-N-T-E-R, dot E-D-U. Have fun. Bye.